Hello everyone. Hope you all are doing good. Today we will discuss on logistics invoice verification. So which is LIV process in SAP MMS 4 HANA. So when we started the procurement cycle, if you remember, the first step was purchase requisition. So once purchase requisition is created, then we saw how the purchase order will be created with reference to purchase requisition. And once purchase order is created, then the purchase order will be sent to the supplier, then supplier will deliver the material. And then we saw how to do the goods receipt with reference to the purchase order. And after doing goods receipt, the next step is our logistics invoice verification. So here now we start verifying the invoice, which is sent by the supplier. So when supplier deliver the material along with the material, they send the invoice copy as well. So there are few points which we need to know as a consultant, we need to know before getting into the system directly. So these are the few points which I have made. So let's discuss one by one and then we will get into the system. Okay. So in invoice verification, there is a point I have mentioned here called reevaluate the material again. So what does that mean? Reevaluate. So here system will reevaluate the material again while doing the invoice verification. That means when we are creating a purchase order, for example, we have created a purchase order with the quantity of 50. 50 quantity you have mentioned in your purchase order. Right? Now when you are receiving the material, you are receiving the 50 quantity. And for th those 50 quantity, whatever cost was defined, it will be seen. For example, for 50 quantity, the cost was 5,000 in the purchase order. For 50 quantity, it was 5,000. So when you are receiving, you are receiving 50 quantity. So now cost is 5,000 rupees of the material you have received. Okay. But when you are receiving the material, after that, while receiving the invoice copy, if you have observed, when we receive the invoice copy, along with the cost of the material, there are few additional charges which is added in the invoice copy. So that can be your transportation charge, packing charge, taxes. So it can be anything. So there will be few additional charges which will be there in your invoice copy. So that means your system start reevaluating the material again. That means and, and there won't be any impact on the quantity. Remember. Because the quantity, whatever you had ordered, you have received that. And with reference to that, you are now doing the invoice verification. So your impact will be on value, no impact on the quantity. Remember this. This, this is a very much important point, which we need to remember. Okay. The next step, the next point is the document type. So what are the different document type we have in invoice verification? We have two type of document. One is accounting document and material document. So we have seen while doing our invoice, uh, sorry, while doing our goods receipt also, we have seen there are two type of document generated and we saw the accounting entries as well, right? So here also we will be seeing the same uh, two different type of document. So what are those two different type of document? So if you remember, we have seen the document type for goods receipt was different, right? But for invoice verification, again, we have two document type. One is RE. RE is the document type which is used for the accounting documents, accounting details. Okay. And the next one is RD. So RD is used for material document. So these are the two document type which we have in invoice verification. And the next one is number range. So we have seen in during goods receipt also number ranges are year dependent. So here also number ranges will be year dependent. So when we will start creating the number range, we will see additionally a new line will be added on that. So uh, along with the reference number and, and the reference code, we see the um, column which will, where we mention the year and then finally the number range we define. Okay. So these are few points which we need to know. Now, apart from this, now we will discuss what are the different ways we can post the invoice or invoice can be done. So invoice can be done in different ways. So these are the few points which I have mentioned here. Like invoice can be done or it can be posted online or invoice can be posted through background job or uh, there is a, a process of parking the invoice uh, 
process we have in invoice verification and then automatic settlement. So while doing automatic settlement, we have ERS consignment and the invoicing plan. So we will discuss in details what are uh, the meaning of invoice posting online, invoice posting background and all. Okay. So what is invoice posting online? So that means while doing the invoice verification in SAP MM, we have the transaction code which we use is MIRO, M-I-R-O, right? So while using this transaction code MIRO, here system starts compare is comparison. And so basically here it compare the invoice copy of the vendor or vendor invoice details with SAP proposed information, right? So system, so when we start doing the invoice verification, Vendor will mention some details along with the uh, material cost in the invoice copy, right? So, so that value will be there. And in invoice, when we create an SAP system, we create with reference to the purchase order. So when we are creating with reference to the purchase order, system will pick the price of the purchase order. So in purchase order, whatever price was mentioned, it will pick that value. So basically here system will compare the vendor invoice details with the system proposed price, right? And then we save the document. So this is called our invoice posting online process. Okay. Now next is what is invoice posting background? So that means invoice can be posted with bad job schedule in the background. So this is again a process which we have Okay. After invoice posting background, we have one, one more point that is our EDI process. So invoice posting can be done through EDI. So if we are posting the invoice through EDI, that means the supplier might also might be using SAP and this is uh, as their ERP. So in that case, we can send the uh, information to the supplier. Okay. So next step is our park the invoice. Park the invoice means we are parking the invoice copy. So uh, when we park the invoice, we have we are using a transaction code MIR7. Sorry, I have not mentioned here, but the transaction code which we use is MIR7. So here the whoever will be the employee who, who is uh, doing invoice verification, here that person will just save the invoice document. So his responsibility is to just mention the purchase order. And with reference to purchase order while he is uh, doing the invoicing, he will just save the invoice document and it will be checked by someone else. Maybe some other employee will be there who will be the senior employee or the senior uh, from uh, that their team itself. And they will be responsible for post that document. So one person will just save the document and another person will post the document. So that is our park the invoice process. So we will see everything in the system. Just I'm uh, discussing on these points. So before starting, we need to know all these points. Okay. Now, after parking the invoice, we have few points, which again, we need to know. There are few processes like automatic settlement process uh, is there in uh, CPMM. So here the first process is our ERS, which is called as evaluated receipt settlement. So what does that mean? What is evaluated receipt settlement? So in this case, the supplier will not send any invoice copy. So based on the uh, goods receipt, the company will post the invoice with reference to the purchase order or uh, the goods receipt. So basically this is done based on the uh, like terms and conditions or based on the agreement with the supplier. And how do we do it? We do it with the transaction code MRRL. So this is the process which we used for automatic settlement for ERS basically. Okay, the next process is consignment and pipeline materials. So what is consignment and pipeline materials we have seen. Now, how can we post it while doing the automatic settlement or why do we, we do it? So basically in this process, again, the supplier uh, is basically settled the based on the goods consumed. So whatever the consumption has been done by the buyer, based on that, this process is done and it is done by the transaction code MRKO. Okay. And the next automatic settlement process is invoicing plan. So what is invoicing plan and what are we doing here? So here basically those invoices are settled which are recurring. 
Okay. For example, uh, invoicing plan, I would say the example of our taxi bills, cab bills, right? So these are the bills which we are getting and at the end of the month, every day we are getting the bills and it is made uh, as the, uh, and, and the payment is done. So there won't be any GR in this process. So we are not doing any goods receipt for uh, like electricity bill or your uh, taxi bills or your, it can be your hotel bills. So we are not doing any goods receipt for that, right? So these are the few like example of the automatic settlement process. So that is what I want to discuss before getting into the system directly. Okay. Now, apart from this, we have few more points, which uh, I would like to discuss before uh, getting into the system. Now I'm moving to the next slide. So here now we can see while doing invoice verification, using this transaction code we have this process or these are the different type of invoices you can say or uh, these are the different ways uh, we can post the invoice okay so invoice will be post by the transaction code miro and these are the points like invoice credit memo subsequent debit and subsequent credit credit so these are the points which we need to know what are all these because while doing invoice verification these are most important transactions which we do okay now so what is invoice so invoice uh, in this process basically the supplier will send the invoice copy and that will be compared with the system proposed quantity and the value which we have discussed and then the posting uh, will be done and the document uh, basically will be posted so basically this is known as your three way match so while doing invoice very uh, while doing invoice verification we do it with reference to the purchase order then with reference to the purchase order goods receipt will be done and then invoice verification will be done so it is called as pogrir so this is called three way match okay now what is this credit memo why do we create it so in this case if we need to receive uh, can access amount uh, which is paid to the vendor or uh, the reverse the invoice posted or in the case of cancellation of the invoice so these are the few cases where we raise this credit memo okay then what is subsequent debit so once the invoice is posted and you need to post some additional value to the same material then this subsequent debit is used so here the value is updated but not the quantity remember this so basically this process is generally used to post the additional uh, delivery charges. In other words, we can say the supplementary invoice posting. Okay. So that is our subsequent debit, which generally we use. So it is depend on your requirement. Based on that, we raise this or we create this document. And then subsequent credit. So subsequent credit means if any additional value need to be recovered from the vendor, Suppose you paid some additional amount and now you want to recover from the vendor. Then this subsequent credit document is posted. So these are the points or these are the basically, I would say, prerequisites or the points which we need to remember, which we need to know before starting the configuration of invoice verification. 